All right, everyone. Welcome to the Parent Informational Nights. Uh, we're excited to have you, and I'm actually really excited to be here. Um, I'm Mike Havener, principal and interim class principal now um, for the great <laughs> class of 2022. So um, I, I truly am excited um, for this opportunity. Uh, sometimes in, in my current position, um, I don't have the opportunity to interact with the students as much as I like. And this is uh, definitely giving me that opportunity. Um, if you don't know, I did, I was an assistant principal for about eight years, not about for eight years um, mm. in my previous um, life, I guess. Um, but uh, I just want to say um, thank you for all the support. Um, uh, really appreciate it. Uh, we're excited. Uh, we're, you, you see a team here on the screen that um, we already knew these people were great, but uh, each one of them has risen above and beyond. And, and I thank them for uh, getting us through this transition time. So um, we're gonna introduce everybody. They're Amy, Amber, Cindy, and Josh are with us tonight. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, some things, but before we really get into the meat of the um, presentation, I wanted to let everybody know you don't have to frantically write notes or anything like this. This is being recorded. It will be on the class website, um, on the Kirkwood High School website under the class tab. Um, so all of this information will be readily available for you. Um, I know junior year is such an important year in the high school experience. And uh, I wanna make sure that we're here to support you uh, right now as, as hopefully we've done up to this point uh, and we'll continue to do in uh, an exciting senior year and hopefully um, we'll be back um, to whatever normal is going to be uh, when we come back for the senior year. But we have to finish some important business tonight or today and tonight um, for the remaining part of this school year because as I said, junior year has a lot going on um, during this time. Um, but uh, you're going to get a lot of information and uh, we're going to be here after tonight. So continue to communicate with us. Um, let us know how we can help. And uh, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to be ready. Uh, and the kids are doing great. And tell your kids if they're not listening right now, they're doing great. Tell them, thank you. Uh, they're, they're, they've risen to the occasion. Um, and some, we always say unprecedented times, man, they, they're outstanding. They, they're, they're going and they're doing what they need to do. And, and we appreciate that. And uh, I, I say thank you to each one of the parents and students uh, for what they've done. Um, I wanna give you a little update uh, before um, we get into the actual class information. Um, a lot of you have asked, uh, what's the plan for the transition? What's that look like? Um, if you don't know right now, uh, we have posted the assistant principal job um, for the junior class. Uh, it is out um, and people are currently applying uh, for the position that will begin in July. July 1st is the official start date, uh, but we posted that on December 21st. So it's been up for a couple weeks now. We're gonna close the position on January 23rd. Um, it's gonna be open for more than a month. Uh, we're gonna actually start interviewing, our process of interviewing uh, right about February 3rd and 4th. That's going to be the first round of interviews. Uh, how many people are going to interview? I don't know that information yet, uh, but I'm, I'm pretty confident we'll have a lot of people uh, apply. Um, quite honestly, they, they know how great the class is. So um, the word is out outside of Kirkwood. So um, I, I'm anticipating a lot of uh, interest. So first round of interviews, February 3rd and 4th. The second round of interviews will be around February 11th of next week. Uh, and our goal, our goal is to have a recommendation um, to the Board of Ed um, and uh, a possible uh, replacement uh, named by the Board of Education meeting on February 22nd. That is all subject to change. Things happen, um, but we do have that uh, tentative timeline. Um, there'll be um, information um, and we will let you know as soon as possible. But I wanted to let you know that the process has started um, to find uh, the new assistant principal uh, beginning July 1st. Again, um, you see Amy, Amy's here, um, secretary uh, for the great class, Amber, uh, uh, grade level counselor, uh, Cindy Ricks. Um, I don't even know if there's a title for Cindy Ricks. I, you know, if there's 
everything. Cindy, we're just going to say everything for Cindy Ricks, and we appreciate that. And Josh J uh, is here with us as the college counselor rep tonight. So uh, thank you, Josh, for all of that. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen now um, and get into the actual presentation. play button is covered up there. So, all right. As I mentioned, everybody who is on the screen, there's our information. Um, if you do email uh, Mike Wade, then it will come to me, just so you know. Um, the emails have been forwarded to me. So um, if you forget, um, that, that will come to me um, as well. So again, this information will be on the website. You don't have to jot it down and you already know all of them um, and their contact information there. So, uh, also want to um, let you know that Ramona Miller, she is the assistant principal of the alternative learning environment uh, or program at Kirkwood High School. She's helping out too. Uh, you may be getting into some meetings. Uh, if I am um, doing something that I'm not available, Ramona has graciously um, agreed to step in and uh, support us during the transition time as well. And I want to thank Ramona for all the help that she continues to do. You, you've heard Cindy's name before, um, Special School District coordinator, Area Coordinator Colleen Card and Officer Don Douglas, great resource. Um, officer Douglas obviously is a police officer. However, he's also a resource for parents who just have simple questions about uh, anything that um, is happening uh, inside school as well as outside school. So feel free to reach out to Don at any point um, during the school year as well. As I said, Josh is representing our um, guidance counselor, our, our college counselors tonight, but we also have some support counselors with Sarah and Kim, definitely there if you need some support within school as well as outside of school. Um, they're easily available, just um, send them an email, give them a call. Um, and then you see Roxana, who is um, our alternative um, counselor, um, as well as Kelly Nevins. And, and I'll just point out with Kelly Nevins because some of you will be um, speaking with Kelly. Kelly is um, our testing uh, coordinator as well as our launch um, coordinator. Launch uh, is our online courses through the Springfield Public School. So you may be talking to Kelly uh, in regards to possibly uh, ACT information and things of that nature uh, in the future. Uh, if you want to take a launch class, um, you start with Amber but then you may be um, talking to uh, Kelly at some point. So we wanna make sure that you at least hear the name, but Amber will be um, the, the point person to set that up with you. And I'm, I'm sure she'll talk a little bit about that as well. Uh-oh. There we go. All right. That's why you don't let me run the slideshow. Just uh, had a little hiccup there. So they put me in charge. Uh, just want to remind you real quick, uh, if you have not purchased our yearbook, um, The Pioneer, uh, here is the information that um, it's still not too late. There are some um, available copies that you can still order, but uh, time is going to run out. There's going to be a deadline. So if you really want a yearbook, um, and they're working really hard to put that yearbook together, kids are doing a great job. The price is $85. And all you have to do is go to the website uh, and sign up and pay. And then when the yearbooks are ready at the end of the year, you'll be ready to go. Uh, and um, we'll have the yearbook distribute distribution of, um, at the end of the year. So um, that's uh, don't, don't forget uh, because that sometimes you put that on the back burner and uh, you forget. And then you say, can I get a book? And there's not enough books at the end of the year. So just a reminder from uh, the pioneer and they wanted us to let you know that. Okay. Also, um, it is junior year, it's class ring time. Um, I always get a question about, do kids really um, want class rings? Uh, and, and honestly, yeah, they, uh, they really want that class ring um, that um, they can keep, obviously. Um, it, it, there's, there's some years that students um, order more than others, uh, but we wanna make sure that that opportunity is there for our students now. So, um, we really want you to um, have this on the website so that if you're interested in ordering it right now with um, the situation that we're in with online learning, it's really gonna be ordering over the um, internet. So um, here's the steps that you need to take. Again, they will be on um, the website so you don't have to jot all this down or if you wanna take a picture right now, I'll keep it up for a couple seconds um, so you can um, see what you need to do to order a class ring. 
Uh, Jeff Rodenberg, um, if this is your first time going through uh, the high school, Jeff will also be the uh, representative when we get to the senior year for all of our senior um, announcements and things of that nature. So uh, this won't be the only time that you work with Jeff. Jeff's a great uh, person, uh, very responsive. Uh, he'll get back to you with any and all answers to any of your questions. So uh, feel free to um, shoot him a question at any point as well. Thank you to our PPO. Honestly, we cannot do the things that we do without our parents' support um, and our PPO. They do an amazing job. They spend hours and hours helping Kirkwood High School, helping the staff, helping our students. Uh, and we really couldn't do what we do. And um, Rebecca Shaney is the president and you'll see all the, all the other officers here. Um, Julie, Jennifer, Jennifer, and Hannah, thank you. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, and they, like I said, uh, they spend hours and hours behind the scenes so that we can do what we, what we need to do. Um, they also are offering, or um, still have the availability to donate. Donations are down a little bit this year just because we're in the um, virtual environment. Uh, but you can definitely go to myschoolbucks.com and uh, if you forgot, um, join PPO. You're, well, everybody's a member of PPO but you can donate uh, to the PPO. Um, also a big shout out to the parent representatives, um, focusing on the class of 2022, the people on the screen, thank you so much. Uh, hopefully you're on and, and listening and um, thank you for everything you do. The class reps work tremendously hard, uh, really focusing on the activities uh, for the class throughout the four years. Um, and I know that this is a great group right here. And um, we wanna thank you for everything that you do uh, and will continue to do for the class. Um, and uh, it doesn't go unnoticed. And uh, we, we really wanted to thank everybody. We do have a virtual PPO meeting uh, on Thursday, February 4th at 6.30. Uh, obviously we will send out the uh, link uh, but it's not, like I said, it's not too late to donate. Uh, just go to myschoolbucks.com. Any donation is, is wonderful. Um, so there's not a set amount, uh, but uh, if you're able to do that, we'd, we'd appreciate that. A little bit about uh, Trivia Night. So unfortunately, uh, Trivia Night has been canceled um, for this, uh, this school year. And I have to say the Trivia Night is the major fundraiser for the after grad party um, senior year. And, um, you know, it probably generates probably between 20 and $30,000 um, just that night. So um, we, we are taking ideas. We'll take any idea, anything that you know that is going to raise around $30,000. If you have that answer, we are ready and willing to listen to all ideas. Um, but I think um, there will be some fundraisers. We're gonna have to do something. Um, there, whatever it is, if you're able, we really need participation in, in it's probably gonna be more than one event. That a trivia night, um, rate, like I said, raises what, uh, $30,000. Um, it's gonna take a couple um, different events at least um, to do that. Um, we're, here's what I, I wanna make sure we, we are, we are dedicated to everything we can to make sure that we're going to have the great uh, after grad party. Okay. I don't want people to start um, getting nervous and um, saying, oh my gosh, we're not going to have an after grad party. The class of 2022 is going to have an after grad party. Okay. I can tell you that right now, um, just for example, how do we know we're going to have one? Well, I can tell you that the senior class right now we have already submitted an idea and plan to St. Louis County so that we could still possibly host uh, an after grad party. So uh, we're dedicated. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't have one last year, uh, but we, we know how important it is um, to have uh, an event after the um, graduation for our students. So um, we're gonna have one. We want ideas uh, and we're gonna continue to raise money um, to make it the great night that it always is. Okay, so um, panelists, if somebody's asking questions, let me know, just jump in and um, let me know. Um, but um, with that said, 
I think I'm going to turn it over right now. I'm going to come back later on, but I'm going to turn it over to Cindy Ricks. So Cindy, um, if you're ready to go. I am. All right. It's. Hi. Uh, I want to start out with a huge thank you to Dr. Havener. He has worn many hats, as you can imagine. He's an excellent principal, but I've forgotten what a great assistant principal he was and how wonderful he is with the kids. So we do appreciate everything that you do on a daily basis. Uh, it's my job to report events. And as you can imagine, I don't have much to report. Prom has been canceled. Dr. Havener and I are waiting on the seniors. The seniors have some, some things that they're trying to get approved. We're waiting to see what they get approved before we present a couple ideas that we are interested in for the class. Um, if those are approved, a possible uh, top golf outing or uh, dance, it's something that would be social distance. I'm going to need a lot of parents to help plan and chaperone. So if you're interested in possibly doing that, please email me, cindy.ricks at kirkwoodschools.org. And I want to give you an update on Mr. Wade. He has been enjoying trips to the barn to watch Ainsley Bride cooking with his daughters over winter break. He's concentrating on getting his immune system to a healthy place so that he can have his knee replacement surgery, which right now is scheduled for the first. Several of you have, have approached me about helping with meals after surgery. We are working on organizing a way to donate for a com combination of a couple different um, meal deliveries like DoorDash and maybe Blue Apron. So we will be sending out information sometime in February if you are interested in donating for that. Um, he also wanted me to pass on that he misses the kids. We were able as class officers to take a sign that was donated to us by Andy Ludbrook of Caribbean Sign Company. All the juniors signed it, or a lot of the juniors signed it, and we took it to his house. The kids also made an incredible video, a goodbye video, that they gave to him also, sent to him, and I think both of those meant a lot to him. Now I'm going to hand over the spotlight to our wonderful grade level counselor, Amber Caprell. Thank you, Ms. Ricks. Um, I always have to talk about the boring stuff, so I apologize. I always have to do like graduation requirements. Not very exciting, but nothing has changed. That's the good news. I've been meeting with several juniors um, going through if they incorrectly signed up for classes next year, or if either they were short or they were over. Um, I've noticed a lot of um, things that I've had to address with them, which we'll talk about in this um, presentation. But the first thing we always show you, those graduation requirements obviously are getting more important since we're approaching senior year. Um, so I've been, um, when I meet with them individually, I've been going through their credits and kind of meeting with them at that time. But I also go over these requirements again uh, in the summer before school starts to let you know if your student is still in need of something for graduation. Um, the one thing I just want to reiterate that I have noticed is sometimes still we are finding that those launch grades from the summer are not reported on the transcript and we have no way of knowing who took a class over the summer. So please, if you have questions about the transcript or if you want to make sure that that launch class was uh, noted finally, um, please contact me so we can get that uh, looked at. Um, academic supports have not really changed. Um, so we have our academic homeroom every Tuesday and Thursday for most weeks that are five-day weeks. Um, students need to meet with their homeroom teacher. They can meet with other teachers during that time, and they also can do meetings with teachers during office hours. I am noticing that the students who utilize these times um, are getting a, a lot more help and are more engaged sometimes with having those higher grades. So I do encourage your student to access the teachers during those times. And remember that peer tutors and district tutors are still available if needed. Um, your student can contact me or you can contact me um, and we can get them connected. One thing I did wanna highlight is this slide with MISHA response eligibility for our students. Remember that your, your student needs to be enrolled in three credits or six half credit classes 
the previous semester as well as the current semester of their activity or sport. Um, as seniors, rising seniors, what I'm noticing is that they have taken classes like a study block IP and an early dismissal. Those two combinations will make them ineligible for their sport, or they might take a cadet teaching and an IP. And so we wanna make sure that you are aware for eligibility that they have to have that requirement. Um, and one full credit over the summertime does count towards eligibility for the fall. If you have any questions, please let me know, or you can contact Corey Nestledge, our athletic director, or Brad Suter, who's our assistant athletic director, and their information is listed here. Um, Learning Pathways is our um, alternative ed education. Some of your students are participating in this. Some I will recommend for this um, down the road. Um, they might be in our Innovation Center or our Discovery Center. They might participate in our launch online learning. They might be in South Tech. Um, or they might be applying to CAPS for next school year. So if you have any questions about those programs, please let me know. The one we're gonna highlight for you tonight um, that students are applying as seniors is the CAPS program, which is our next slide. This is a half day on-site program that's very similar to an internship. So students actually go out into the business world or to the medical world and they get real life experiences with medical professionals or engineering specialists or whatever the opportunity. They have five strands. Um, I've been meeting with students. We have about 15 students who've applied so far. I recommend that they get in their applications soon um, because they are gonna start the round of acceptance coming up. Um, and some of them have limited spots. And so we wanna make sure if our Kirkwood students wanna participate that they get that application in now. And Amber is sorry, I'm just going to throw a question in here. Um, one of the most popular um, programs inside this is the medical program. So if that's something that somebody is interested in, we need to get those in as soon as possible. They only have 50 spots in the medical program. So that is the one that they do cut from um, the most. So we would like uh, your student to apply sooner. And it's a, they go to this program for half of the day and they go to Kirkwood High School for the other half of the day. So I would arrange with them their schedules. Um, so that they could still participate and graduate on time while participating in this program. Um, this is not something I'm going to read through directly, but we wanted you to have some social and emotional supports. Um, these times have been very difficult on our students and we want to recognize that there are supports available. Um, you can start with me, I can connect you with our social worker or our educational support counselor that um, Dr. Havener talked about earlier, but uh, our students are feeling more isolated. They're feeling the tensions that are going on in our society. They have a lot of questions. There's a lot of um, anxiety. So we want to make sure that you and your student are supported. And if you have any concerns, please reach out. We have resources available. And there's some parent supports for you guys as well, because these are hard conversations that we're having with our, our kids right now. Um, and we know that you need support as well. <laughs> why it's doing that. Amber, while I screw this up a little bit more, there's two questions. Um, one of them is about the CAPS program. Where do you get or how do you get an application to sign up for uh, CAPS? So um, if I type into the website STL CAPS, it comes up and at the very top right hand corner of their website is a brief application. I had a, I was with a student the other day and he's like, wow, this is short and to the point. And I was like, probably the shortest application you're ever going to do. It's like going to take them about 10 minutes. So it's a very short application on the STL CAPS website. And then before you start on this one, uh, about I EOCs. I asked a question about EOCs. Yeah. Perfect. So will students be able to take the EOCs this year? Um, we are planning on taking EOCs this year. Um, the state has not exempted those at this point. Um, the ones that were exempted last year for our class was the English 2 end of course exam. We will not have to make that up. We will just move forward with like the biology end of course exam, the government end of course exams. And if your students still needed the algebra end of course exam, we will um, move forward with those this spring, usually in April. Thank you. The A plus program is an opportunity for your student if they are um, considering their financial um, concerns for our colleges and they want another opportunity to earn a scholarship. The A plus program affords most of our students this opportunity. 
because honestly, it's what they're already doing as Kirkwood High School students. They have uh, attended here for three consecutive years, have a 2.5 GPA or higher. Um, they have good citizenship, so they aren't getting uh, suspended for things like drugs or alcohol. And they um, just do 50 hours of unpaid tutoring. And that can be with our high school students or if they're not comfortable with the high school students, we can help um, get them connected with elementary or middle school tutoring as well. Um, so if you are interested in your student participating, the first thing to do is to sign a contract. So you would get that um, from that website that's listed there. And then um, I can help or Mrs. Miller's office is in charge of the A plus program. So they can help you get connected with those tutoring opportunities. Um, and then hopefully you'd be eligible by the end of those four years, um, we look at your attendance over those four years. We look at your cumulative GPA over those four years. So you have time to still get involved in this wonderful opportunity to get some college um, paid for free at the community college or technical school in the state of Missouri. So let me emphasize that paid for free, it's free. So if you are considering this, there, this is a great opportunity. And I'll just say this, um, these aren't our requirements. This is the A plus program requirement. So I always get after the four years, Dr. Havener, I have a 94% attendance rate. Can you just say, okay, that's not Dr. Havener's choice uh, decision. So this is the A plus state decision. So I just want to make sure that everybody knows, but this is a great opportunity. If that's even in your radar, uh, please sign up uh, that it's, it's well worth it. Okay, and I think I'm turning it over to Mr. Javorowski, one of our college counselors. Yes, thank you, Amber, and, uh, and thank you, Dr. Havener. Like Dr. Havener said, uh, my name is Josh Jevorowski, and that usually just gets shortened to Mr. J because <laughs> it's entirely too long to say. Uh, and I am one half of the college counseling team. Uh, so if your last name begins with A through K, uh, I'll be working with you. And if it begins L through Z, uh, my partner, Abby Peterson, will be working with you. And you'll still be working with Ms. Caprell. She'll still be doing all your graduation requirements, courts registration, uh, all those things that she's been doing the last three years, she's gonna continue to do that. And really what Abby and I do is we come alongside her in that. In fact, I've been in several conversations uh, the last month or so with Amber and families. And so that's the process we started and we work as a team. And so uh, I know Abby and I are always excited to get started with these individual uh, junior conversations. Uh, we have seen your kids in some bigger settings. We have worked through some career assessments. We have been in some big scheduling meetings, but now really is the time when uh, Abby and I will begin to focus on these individual conversations with students and families. And as you can see from the screen there, these are really our three big goals. These are the three things that we wanna work through uh, in a conversation with you. I think it's one of the most exciting things about what Abby and I do is to, to hear the individual stories uh, the expectations and the goals that kids have, we get to enter into those conversations with you. So we're here to provide post-secondary planning. Uh, we also want to help you find the best fit. What is going to be, I like to use the word next step. What is going to be your next step and, and how are you going to fit into that? And so again, we do that through our individual and student family meetings. Um, as we think about just a couple things right now, uh, there's a couple big themes that um, really every student kind of kind of steps into. Uh, an individual plan is usually created for each student, but these are really the, the three big things when we start our meetings that we want to talk about. Um, one is to create a testing plan. I'm going to talk a little bit more about testing on a few more slides, um, but taking the ACT or the SAT. Uh, we're gonna, we could talk a little bit about that when those dates come and what that might mean uh, for college admissions and scholarships. Uh, this past year, some of that was put on hold. Some schools went test optional, but I have this feeling that a lot of schools are gonna revert back to using that test score for both admission and scholarships. And so we wanna make sure um, our students are in position and that they have the space to take that test the necessary times that they wanna do it. One of the other things we've been emphasizing in some of our scheduling meetings is uh, dual credit classes. And that list just keeps growing at Kirkwood High School. Uh, it is in the front of the course book, um, probably within the first uh, maybe 10 pages there, but a list of classes that are offered for dual credit. Uh, and seniors definitely have a good list of classes that they can take for dual credit. So if you need help with that or deciphering what that means, 
uh, Amber and I can certainly do that uh, as you're putting together your schedule. The second thing that we really wanna do is we want students to begin to think about a list of schools or a list of options. Uh, we do not put a number on how many applications a student should fill out or should not fill out. Uh, but what we do start with is if a student could come up with, you know, maybe three to five schools that they can work through uh, just, just to get started to say, hey, I know these are some schools that I wanna apply to. Uh, we wanna be ready come fall. Uh, it doesn't sound like that far away, uh, but when you think about it, uh, you'll be applying probably in the, the first semester of next year. Uh, and, and that's not that far as we get going. So we want to talk a little bit about uh, creating that list of schools. Uh, as we revert back to testing here, uh, a couple things I want to say is, uh, again, the purpose of the a a ACT can be used for college admission and scholarships. And so, um, again, that's going to look different for every single student. Uh, and we're not advocating that you need to take the ACT five or six times, but what we are saying is uh, if you don't give yourself a chance, if you don't get the score you want, that there'll be an opportunity to retake that test. The ACT will be offered here at KHS. We're gonna offer that on March 2nd. Uh, that'll be during the school day. It is free to all students. Um, there will be no writing on that test and every student is already signed up for that test. If you do not want to take the test, then you'll need to engage in the opt out process if you don't want to take it. But as of now, every student gets enrolled to take that test. That is the only time that Kirkwood High School will, uh, will, will sign your student up for a test. Uh, if you want to take the ACT again, uh, you or your student would need to sign up at ACT.org uh, and you would have to, you know, pick one of their national test dates to do that. Uh, and those will be coming up in a minute. Um, the thing on the bottom of the page, we get a lot of questions about ACT prep, and it's really hard to, for us to just endorse uh, one company, one person, one system, because um, different things work for different kids. There's online options, there's individual tutoring options, uh, there's class options, there's online class options. And so if you go to our ACT prep page, we try to keep that updated, and all the things that come through our office, all those um, testing seminars or tutoring opportunities, we try to highlight and put those on our website so you can have a price there. Um, this is also a conversation you can certainly have with Abby and I if you uh, are thinking about stepping into some ACT prep. These are the uh, ACT national test dates, uh, and that's where you would register for the national ACT. Something to keep in mind is you need to register about a month in advance. So if you, I'm not going to read them all, but if you look at that April test, you can see that you're probably going to want to register by March 12th uh, to go ahead and be eligible for that test. So if you look at that, um, for our juniors particularly, uh, you've got about four times left to take the ACT prior to your senior year. So I realize people travel in the summer, there's things going on, but you probably want to give yourself space. What are some dates that could work for me to take this test? The other question that we do get quite a bit and I, is the SAT. And as of right now, um, any school will take the SAT or the ACT for admission or scholarships. They don't prefer one over the other. Uh, in fact, the SAT was rewritten about five years ago. So I don't, I don't have any hard data to back this up. But, it, but as I work with students that have taken both the SAT and the ACT, I, I don't see a big difference in their scores. It's not like they score really well on the ACT and then lower on the SAT. So the scores seem to be pretty similar. The tests are a little bit different. Um, if for some reason um, you think the SAT might set, set up better for your son or daughter, certainly do that. You can take the SAT. Uh, you will not close a door in terms of admission or scholarships uh, for that. Uh, the final thing on there is the SAT subject test. And I will say this is uh, maybe a little bit of a dying breed here. Uh, there is very few schools left that are, re are requiring SAT subject tests. And what an SAT subject test is essentially is it allows a student to highlight a specific academic area. Uh, one of those areas that they give it in is uh, a, the world languages. So when they take the SAT or ACT, that's not content that is on those tests but a subject test might let a student highlight their 
ability in chemistry uh, or their abil uh, ability in government and politics or um, a world language. So some schools, it, it's basically used at the highly selective schools. Uh, Georgetown's an example of one school that still does require the SAT subject test. So if you've got uh, some highly selective schools on your map, um, Abby and I'd be happy to talk about if that subject test is required and if you need to do it. SAT and SAT subject test are run through the college board. So again, that's the same company that runs AP. If you wanna take one of those, you would sign up for the college board. Um, I can't see it, but Dr. Hamm, do I have questions? I need to pause yeah. here for a minute. Josh, okay. just, a, and, I, and I think you touched on this, just to, just to make sure that we asked the specific question. What is the major difference between the ACT and the SAT, if, if there is one? Sure. So what I, what I would say that to highlight the differences on the two, the ACT is going to have more questions. So they're going to want you to answer more questions in a timed format. Um, kind of like they want to see how quick you can answer these math questions in a row. Uh, where the SAT might uh, allow you a little more time on a question, but those questions are probably going to require a little deeper thought um, than just maybe like the simple algebra you know, problem that you, okay, I know the answer quickly. It's based off speed. Uh, the SAT does say they don't have a science portion of, of the test, and they certainly don't. However, um, on the ACT, the science section is really graph analysis and data interpretation. And those two skills are all over the SAT test as well. So it's not like you can run from the skill that they're testing uh, on the, the ACT that's not on the SAT. So that's a high level answer. I don't know if I can go any more granular than that without, without boring most of the crowd here. Oh, that's but, perfect. Mr. Jay, one of the other things that was asked was the February sign up date has passed. I did go to ACT and look. The late deadline for registration is actually tomorrow, the 15th, but you would have to pay the late fee deadline. So you still can register if you wish to pay the late fee. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait until the next examination. Also, Mr. Jake, can you um, talk a little bit about is financial aid still based on those ACT or SAT scores? Yeah. Um, Without getting too far into it, financial aid is really based off two things. It's either based off merit, and merit is usually based off your standardized test score and your GPA. Um, it can be based off financial need as well. So yeah, merit aid can be based off your ACT score. Uh, here's the uh, SAT, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> The SAT always does my, me too, Josh. Don't worry. I'm losing my voice here. I, I talk too much today. Um, <clears throat> the SAT subject test dates, again, you would enroll in those through the collegeboard.org. Um, here's just kind of a, a quick list of the individual uh, family meetings. So I want to highlight a couple of things here, um, a couple of middle things. Develop good students should be developing really good relationships with their teachers during their junior year. These are probably the teachers that are going to be writing their recommendation letters. And so just good practice. And I think for them to, to understand who these teachers are and how they can um, can write a letter for them. This semester is it in terms of maintaining grades. So the final cumulative GPA at the end of your junior year will be the GPA that is going to go on your um, college uh, applications. Uh, I've talked to Ms. Caprell about this, and, and I know she's very, very much aware of this, but develop a solid senior year schedule. Uh, do things that are going to be good for you holistically, from a mental health standpoint, from an academic standpoint. Um, stretch yourself, but do it in the appropriate way uh, that you can handle it, but it will still be good for you at the next level, just in terms of um, your learning, but also uh, what your resume will look on like wh which resume will look as well uh you know stay involved i, I always tell students uh, i don't think this is the time to sign up for 15 more clubs uh I, I don't think you need to go a mile wide and an inch deep but keep doing those long-standing commitments that you've been doing and if there's a thing or two you want to add please do that maybe there's a a volunteer effort opportunity a mentorship opportunity uh, a leadership opportunity, whatever that is, maybe add, try to add one of those. But um, I don't think students should be racing around trying to add so many things to their schedule uh, just to put bullet points on a resume. I think schools really want to see you do a couple things 
and they want to see you do them good. Josh, just this, this is really yeah. not, uh, this is a PSAT question. When do yeah. and how do they pay for the PSAT? Because that's coming up and, and that was from before, sorry. Sure. So the, the PSAT is coming up. Uh, that would go through Kelly Nevins. And so on that slide that Dr. Havener said, actually, I just talked to Kelly today about that. If you have not signed up for the PSAT, if you just uh, contact Kelly, um, she can do that whole process for you. I think I just worked with a student today with that did that with Kelly. So she can get them signed up. I, I believe she can at this point, but she's the one that would do that. Okay. But Thank you. Is that, was that the question? Box. They can go to my school box now and okay. pay for that. Okay. Thanks. Uh, now be on to something you've heard a little bit about, and uh, this is a couple ways that you can use Naviance. I'm not going to step through each individual one. It is a great research tool um, when you're trying to put together a list of colleges that may be of interest to you. So there's a way to do college searches. Um, it can be quite overwhelming looking at it. Uh, one thing we've tried to do, um, it'll be on one of the, the pages at the end here, but we have created a YouTube channel, our college counseling department has. And on that channel, we've created videos that show you how to use these functions in Naviance. So um, what I would ask is just if you're interested in doing that, um, you can go to that and you can see how to do uh, research for your college list in Naviance. If you're having trouble logging on, here's the login information. But if you do have trouble logging on, that's a simple email to me and I can help you out uh, to do that. So uh, we can get you logged into Naviance. It is extremely helpful for college research though. Uh, we do have uh, our, our big upcoming event, kind of like everything else in this season uh, ha has gotten changed from live to virtual. And so each year we have a college information night for our sophomores and juniors. So some of you might've attended that at KHS last year. Uh, but what we're doing this year is uh, we have asked our presenters um, to create a video of their presentation, and then we're going to post those uh, in a playlist on our YouTube channel. The one benefit I think for students and families this year is they can view all the presentations. In the past, they could, you know, the presentations were taught live twice, and we didn't record them. So that limited students and families to what they could actually participate in. But this year, it's going to be virtual. Uh, we're trying to even add some more options. Uh, the hope is that College Information Night was scheduled for March 3rd. So the hope is, is that those videos, or March 1st, I believe, will be posted that first week in March, and you'll have access to it for College Information Night. Here's a couple things that we are already looking at and we have commitments for for College Information Night this year. Mr. Um, a lot of uh, yeah, parents sure. are, are so there's a couple of things asking about how do parents get access to Naviance. So a, a, as of right now, um, Naviance switched over about a year ago and their Naviance login is actually tied to uh, their Gmail account through the school district. So a, as of now, we there is no parent accounts on Naviance. That is something that we did do several years ago. Naviance gave the option to do that but I don't know if it's a security thing or something on the Naviance end, uh, but we had, to, we had to change it to where the, the only way students could log in was, was basically tied to their Gmail account. So um, you just have to work with your, uh, with your student on that uh, to view what they're seeing. But right now we do not have uh, parent accounts on Naviance. Any other questions there, Amber, that I'm, before I blow through this? Yeah, um, yeah just, as we as we kind of close here with this portion of it, I'm going to obviously be on to answer a few more questions. But um, I, I can't stress enough the uh, the importance it is to have options, um, and that what we don't want to do is a lot of times students don't actually commit or make a decision till their school, uh, maybe to this to the spring of their senior year. So what we don't want to see them do is we don't want to see them close the door in the fall that they can't open in the spring. Uh, Ms. Caprell talked a little bit about scholarships, the Merit Aid scholarships. To be eligible for all those, those applications need to happen in the fall. So we really want to be proactive as a college counseling team to help you get in before those deadlines hit. And we want you to be looking at a list of options. Hey, here's three or four places I can go. At what's going to be the best academic and financial fit for me in that? And so that's really our main goal in that. 
Uh, and I, like I said, that probably is a little bit more of an individual conversation, but that's what Abby and I are in the process of doing right now. Our secretary, Ms. Stump, uh, is doing an amazing job uh, scheduling every single student in the junior class for Abby and I. Um, if, you haven't, if you haven't gotten an appointment yet, she's working on it. And what she really tries to do is she tries to match it up where the student can meet with us during their study block or IP. She tries extremely hard not to pull them out of a class for a college counseling meeting. So she's working on it. Um, she doesn't get enough credit for what she does. So I, I know I'm personally extremely thankful for the work that she does every day for Abby and I. Uh, so just to let you know that will be coming and we are setting pro proactively setting those meetings up. If you feel you need to meet quicker than that, just drop us an email and we'll get you on the schedule. Josh, I, I really want to emphasize this is a process. I don't, you know, sometimes when we start talking about college, um, the anxiety goes up a little bit like we've got to figure this out right now. Um, and that's a process for the family as well as the student. And we need to find the best fit for that student. Is that pretty much accurate? Yes, that's right on. Okay. Yep, right on. Not everybody knows where they want to go right now. That's, that's yes. okay. There's a, it's there's okay. a lot of undecided. I, yes. I say all the time. Undecided is an okay answer. Let's talk through that. <laughs> Mr. J, can you talk a little bit about how the Kellogg reps are handling camp, campus visits? Yeah, that's a really good question. So um, you, as you know, a lot of those campus visits got shut down. Uh, some, some schools are starting that back up in a limited fashion. Um, Mizzou is a good example of that. They are doing campus visits right now, but it's actually kind of hard to get in because they're limiting um, the number of students that can do that. This would be my recommendation right now is in this COVID season, a lot of schools created a, a whole lot of virtual visit type stuff online. Um, I don't think that experience is near as good as the actual visit, but if you're interested in a school now, maybe January, February, March, this is a time where you look at some of those virtual visits and you know, with the hope that maybe some things later in the semester or even into the summer can loosen up. And, and if it's available to you and you're able to do it, maybe do some of those college visits at that point. Uh, if it gets pushed out a little further, uh, I mean, that's just how it is. Uh, the class of 2021 had to deal with that across the board, um, but they, there's a lot of virtual visits out there. But if you can do a, a live visit to just even get around the campus, that is extremely helpful to see. Josh, I just want to also emphasize with something that you said earlier that um, this is a really important semester for the junior class, that being the last one that's going to be go on their college application. Uh, with that said, um, sometimes people misunderstand that statement. Uh, while this is extremely important, you still have to send your final transcript your senior <laughs> year. So it's not over. Um, so I just yeah. want to make sure some kids say, well, I already submitted my, in, by November 1st deadline next year, my application, it's all over. That's the process to say, yes, the stamp that you're coming is after you finish high school. So um, just want to make sure people understand, yes, this is extremely important. However, it's just not over. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. Uh, I agree with that hundred uh, percent. Uh, and also just this last slide here, two things I would highlight, our website and our YouTube channel is really where we're pushing our information. So um, we spent a lot of time trying to get as much as we can out there for you. So we continue to put stuff there as well. All right. Any, any other questions? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open it. I'm gonna show the last slide here. Okay. Uh, there's gonna be some time. I'm gonna give some wait time because people are probably processing a lot of information that we went over. Uh, these are dates that they'll be on the, the slide. You don't have to write them down and just let you know. Um, while I exit out of here, I want to um, make sure that everybody understands a little bit about the uh, a four day week because we have a four day week coming up. Um, obviously, uh, Martin Luther King Day is on Monday. We are not in session on Monday, uh, but it will be our first four day week um, of the semester. And on a four day week, I wanna make sure everybody understands that we are actually in school. If you're in person uh, or virtual, we're following on Tuesday, the odd day, Wednesday, the even, Thursday, the um, odd, but the Friday on a four day work or a four day week is virtual even day, okay? It's a different schedule. We're gonna, we're gonna go virtual still on the Friday, 
However, the schedule that we follow is the actual even day schedule. It's not a normal Friday schedule, okay? As some people got confused on that, uh, but I wanted to go over that uh, definitely so that we, we could say we did that. Um, if you have questions, go to the chat room. We'll give you a couple minutes here. Um, a lot of information. Uh, hopefully it was helpful for you, um, but we wanna make sure that you have time that um, we can answer any of those questions that might be coming to the surface now after you heard all of this. Um, really important year. Uh, kids are doing a great job. Um, again, these individuals on the screen right now, outstanding, can't thank them enough. Yes, I am trying to give you some time to type. So give you a couple more minutes here. All right. Um, someone is having problems with the PSAT in my school box. Um, shoot um, Amber an email or Josh an email and they'll get you in contact with Kelly Nevins um, so that we can get that figured out. Okay, so um, we wanna make sure that it, it, it's something's going on because it's supposed to be there. I saw it a little bit earlier today. So uh, we'll get that figured out definitely. And we'll get you in touch with Kelly. Just, or you can shoot Amy an email as well, any of us really. Cindy, you, you can send you Cindy an email too. All right. Well, I don't see any more questions. So I really wanna thank everybody again for everything that um, you're doing to help us get through this time. Uh, your kids are amazing, awesome. Tell them thank you. I'm sure they're listening to us. Um, so um, tell them uh, that we have uh, asynchronous learning tomorrow. Make sure they're doing their work. Uh, have a wonderful weekend. Dr. Hamer, and, a couple oh, questions came up. Awesome. <laughs> sure. Um, there was a question in the Q&A about uh, receiving an invitation to meet and discuss uh, college planning. Um, yeah, you, like I said, Ms. Stump is working through that. But if you are ready to meet now, just send me an email or Abby, whoever your college counselor is, and, and we can get you on the schedule. Uh, we'll do that. But right now, she's currently working on getting everybody's schedule. But we are we're more than happy if you want to get going now. Just send me an email and we'll get you on the schedule. If you want to know if you purchased a yearbook, um, go ahead and uh, email Mitch Eden, Mitch Eden, and he'll be able to tell you uh, if you're on the list for a yearbook, definitely. And if you happen to pay twice, uh, we will definitely refund your money if that should happen. All right, everyone. Thank you again. Uh, appreciate everything. Have a great night. Have a great weekend. Everyone stay safe. Can't wait to see everybody um, as soon as possible in person. Um, so take care, be safe. Thank you.